right, section 6.2 is on solving quadratic equations by graphing. So same kind of thing. We're going to do some t-tables to figure out what our parabola looks like. Okay, so it says sometimes it'll be useful to find the x-intercepts of a function. For instance, if you throw something up in the air, guys, um, so if I throw something in the air from the Empire State Building, it, the height of the object in feet would be given by that equation. If we wanted to find when it hit the ground, that means that the height would be equal to zero. So you would find when the height, h of, h of t, equals zero. These would be the x-intercepts of the function. Does that make sense? So if we have some kind of parabola, so I started out at the top of the Empire State Building, I come down, where it hits the ground, that's height equals zero, that's your x-intercept. Okay, so the zero of a function is a value of the input x that makes the output, so the y value, equal to zero. These are called roots or x-intercepts. So if you hear zero, root, or x-intercept, that all means the same thing. Okay, so some different sketches. If I have one real solution, so solution meaning one real root or x-intercept, think about what your graph would look like. It would come down, it hit, and then it'd go back up. That would be one answer. You could also have a downwards parabola, but it would be below the axis, it would hit the axis, and then it would go back down. All right, two real solutions. That means your parabola would intersect in two places along the x-axis. So one and two. And the last one, no real solution, what does that mean? Yeah, it just like comes down and goes back up, and it never intersects. Okay, those would be um, solutions with i in them. So we talked about i in the last chapter. All right, so number one, so find the zeros of the function x squared plus 5x minus 6 by using a graph in a table. Okay, so let's start out. Do you guys remember when we first talked about um, systems of equations, so when things intersected and we graphed them, and then I taught you another method, I taught you substitution or elimination. Similar with this, like you're going to learn this graphing method, and then we're going to learn something that's going to make our lives a lot easier. So these are going to be kind of tedious at first. So easy numbers to plug in, 0, 1, those are both easy. So if I plug in 0, I get 0 squared plus 5 times 0 minus 6, so I get negative 6. If I plug in 1, I get 1 squared plus 5 times 1 minus 6. Okay, so that one equals 0, so that's good. So 0, negative 6. And I have 1, 0. Is this going to open upwards or downwards? Upwards, right? So that means our graph is going to come down, go through those points, and go back up. Okay, you don't have to sketch that. So I would try some negative numbers to find the other 0. Does that make sense why you would do that? Because on the other side, it's on the left side. So let's try like negative 2. Okay, so when I try negative 2, I get negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2 minus 6 equals 0, or equals something. So 4 minus 10 minus 6. Okay, so now we're at negative 12. Way down there. So way down here somewhere. So we probably need to go with a bigger negative, right? So any guesses? What are you going to try? Negative 5, negative 6. Let's try negative 5. Okay, so I have negative 5 squared plus 5 times negative 2. Or, sorry, what am I doing? Plus 5 times negative 5 minus 6 equals. So I have 25 minus 25 minus 6. That's going to help us a lot because now I get negative 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so right there. And we know that our parabola is symmetric. So if I had these two points, and the point on the right of that was a 0, that means the point on the left of the other one is going to be a 0. So if you plug in negative 6, I'm going to guess you get 0, so negative 6 squared plus 5 times negative 6 minus 6. 
So I get 36 minus 30 minus 6. That does equal 0. So my two answers are 1 and negative 6. Because those are the numbers that gave me 0 out. Okay, so your parabola looks something like this. <coughs> so obviously this is pretty hard when your x-intercepts are things that you wouldn't expect, like negative 25. I mean, you don't want to keep doing a t-table with bigger and bigger negatives, and then it ends up being like negative 25. Those would be hard numbers. So there are some shortcuts that are going to make this a little bit easier, easier for you. So if we had known where the axis of symmetry was, don't you think that would make it easier? Because for every one point I draw, I would actually get two points on your graph. So maybe that's a good thing to do. So maybe on this next one, we should find the axis of symmetry first. So I have x equals negative b over 2a. So it's negative 4 over 2 times negative 1. So negative 4 over negative 2 is 2. Okay, that's what I'm going to put in the center of my t-table. So let's try 0 and maybe 4. So subtract 2, add 2. So those will be our little starting points. Okay, so when I plug in 0, I get negative 0 squared plus 4 times 0 minus 4. You end up with negative 4. When you try 2, you end up with negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 4. So negative 4 plus 8 minus 4, that's 0. So that's one of them. That's your axis though, isn't it? Your axis goes through 2, so let's go ahead and draw it in. So what does that mean? There's only one answer, right? So your only 0 is 2. Good. So that saved us a bunch of time. All right, three, find two real, real numbers whose sum is 4 and whose product is 5 or show that no such numbers exist. Okay. So I want x plus y to equal 4, and I want x times y to equal 5. All right, we're going to do substitution. So in this first one, we're going to solve for y. So I'd have y is equal to 4 minus x. And instead of having y in the second equation, I'm going to replace it with 4 minus x. So I'm going to have x times 4 minus x equals 5. This is going to be a quadratic equation. So it's going to have x squared. Multiply in, so I get 4x minus x squared plus or equals 5. And then I want to get everything on one side. It doesn't matter which side you get them on. I usually like for my x squared to be positive. I don't know. So let's add my x squared over to the right side and subtract the 4x. I still have plus 5. So I just got everything on one side of the equation. So what this is saying is find when y equals x squared minus 4x plus 5, which is a parabola, crosses the x-axis. So when it equals 0. Okay, so we're going to do what we just did. We're going to draw a graph. First, I'm going to do the, x, or the axis of symmetry. So x equals negative b over 2a. So I get negative, negative 4, so positive 4, over 2 times 1. So I get 4 over 2, which is 2. So that's my axis. And then I do my t-table. So I'm going to put 2 in the middle. You can try 1 or 0, it doesn't matter. So let's try 1 and 0. And then let's try 3 and 4 on the right side. 
let's start in the middle. So what do I get when I plug 2 in? So in my original function, if I had, so if I had 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 5, that'd be 4 minus 8 plus 5. So 4 minus 8, uh, so negative 4 plus 5 is 1. So I get 2, 1. So that's right there. Okay, from here I'm done. I can tell already. Can you guys tell why this isn't going to cross the axis? Why? It goes upwards. Does it make sense? So since it goes up, it's not going to cross the axis. So you can do some other points. You can plug in 1. If you plug in 1, you get 1 minus 4 plus 5, so 2. So if you plug in 3, you get 2 as well. It's just going to go up. So it's never crosses. So never equals zero. So no numbers exist. So we've shown that there's no, there's no way for two numbers to add before and multiply them by. It doesn't work. Okay, four, solve x squared minus six x plus plus 3 by graphing. If exact roots cannot be found, state the consecutive integers between which the roots are located. So let's say um, if you were on, like let's say you were at between 3 and 4, and 1 was below and then 1 was above the axis, that would make sense that it would have to cross between 3 and 4. So that's what it's saying. So you guys go ahead and try to graph this one and think about it. So I'll give you a couple seconds to try it. Okay, so you guys all got the axis of symmetry was 3, so you did x equals negative b over 2a. So it's negative negative 6 over 2 times 1. So 6 over 2 is 3. So I saw that as I walked around. You guys all had that. Okay, so that means on your t-table, it would be a good idea to kind of put that in the middle. So maybe try 1 and 5, or you could try 2 and 4, it doesn't matter. Um, so when you plug 3 in, you'd have 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 3. So you get 9 minus 18, so negative 9 plus 3, so negative 6. Did you guys get that? So 3 negative 6. If you plug 1 in, you get 1 squared, so 1 minus 6. So negative 5 plus 3, so negative 2. All right, that means that if you had plugged in 5, you would also get negative 2. You guys get these points so far? Okay. Um, so let's go bigger. So let's try like 0 maybe. And 6. So if I try 0, I get 3. So that means 6 is also going to give me 3. Okay, so that means that my parabola had to cross somewhere between 0 and 1 and somewhere between 5 and 6. Does that make sense? Why I had to cross there? Okay, so 5 was a negative, like when I plugged 5 in, I got a negative number. When I plugged 6 in, I got a positive. So somewhere between 5 and 6, it had to go through 0. Okay, and then number 5, it says the highest bridge in the United States is the Royal George Bridge in Colorado. Um, the deck of the bridge is 1,053 feet above the river below. I would never go over that bridge in my life. <laughs> I'd be scared. Suppose a marble is dropped over the railing from a height of three feet above the bridge deck. So, like, you're standing there and you drop it from about, like, your hip. So, somewhere there. Um, suppose a marble is, oh, I already said that. So, how long will it take for the marble to reach the surface of the water, assuming there is no air resistance? Use the formula h of t equals negative uh, 16t squared plus h sub zero, where h sub zero is the initial height. So a lot of times you'll see that in like physics and chemistry and things, they'll say like h sub zero or v sub zero for initial velocity. So sub zero always means initial. So h sub zero 
is 1053. Oh yeah, 1056, thank you. Why is it 1056 and not 1053? Exactly. All right, so I have, I'm gonna find when it hits the water. So I wanna find when my height is equal to zero. So I have negative 16 t squared plus 1056. And you can try to factor, like you pull out a common factor and all of that, but you actually don't need to in this problem because you don't have a t squared and a t. So see how you can just subtract the 1056 over and divide by negative 16. So negative 1056 divided by negative 16. So you get t squared equals 66. And then you take the square root. So you get 8.124 seconds. Okay, I wrote plus or minus, but since this is time, I can't go back in time. So it's just uh, the positive one. So it took about eight seconds for it to drop. It's a long time. <laughs> it's very, very high. Uh, scary. All right. So on your homework, I wanted to mention a couple things. So I combined section 6.3 and section 6.2. So on your homework, um, you might want to think about how to factor. So that's the shortcut. I told you for learning the graphing method, there's also the factoring method. So like on number one in the next example, or in the next section, if I have f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 8, and I'm finding the zeros, I'm finding when f of x is equal to zero. So the y is equal to zero. And we can do that by graphing, like we just learned, or you can do it by factoring. So when I factor, I would need x and x. You need them to multiply to be 8. So like 4 and 2 multiply to be 8, and they need to be the same sign. In this case, they both need to be negative because our middle number is negative. See how your outer and inner make negative 6x? So I have x minus 4 times x minus 2 equals 0. So x minus 4 could be 0, or x minus 2 could be 0. So when those two things multiply together, make 0. That's called the zero product property. Like something times something else equals 0. So one of those two things has to be equal to 0. So that means x equals 4 or x equals 2. So what this means about your graph, you don't have to graph this, but it means at 4, whoops, I just drew it at 3. At 4 and 2, that's where it's crossing the axis. Okay. So you have several of those on your homework, so if you guys want to start on those, you can as well.